Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is a continuation of a lecture on functions for intermediate algebra. Of course, this could also be used for uh, any other course, uh, whether you're prepping for pre-calculus trigonometry or you're in calculus or something like that. This uh, whole series of lectures on functions is extremely important for all future courses in mathematics. In this part, we're going to take on function notation and also evaluate functions. This is really going to glue together the uh, idea of a function and all of the mathematics we've done in the past. Here we go. Function notation. We let y equals this notation, which I won't say until I get the quotes below, and say that y is equal to f of x. So we let y equal f of x and that's what we say. We say y is equal to f of x, not f times. In fact, maybe I should say not times. It's not multiplication. Okay. In fact, it's almost easier to say f evaluated at f or at x. Evaluated at x. Anyway, f is a function name. It doesn't have to be f. Um, in fact, often you'll find that I will use function names that represent the situation. So if we're talking about cost of something, then I'll use c of x. Or I might even use the whole word, cost of x. Uh, x is the independent variable. f of x, that whole notation, is the output that corresponds to the input variable x. So this will probably probably need a lot more explanation, and uh, usually examples kind of help out quite a bit. We'll start with an extremely simple example. f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. What this is saying is that x is the input. That's our input variable. f of x is our output. Now remember, f of x is just a fancy way of writing the letter y. And this is where a lot of students start saying, well, then why can't we just keep the letter Y? And when I was a student, I asked that question. I thought it was a great question. And I still think it's a great question. Because when you go to graph this or anything like that, actually, you shouldn't build a table to graph this. But if you were to build a table of values, you know, let's say negative 1, 0, 1, 2, that type of thing, and you get a set of outputs, right? Negative 2, 1, 4, uh, 7. Okay. What's interesting about this is if you go along and you say, um, let's say I'm doing a bunch of work, and I'm doing a work on a, on a function here, and I plug in the value of 10. So I, when I plug in the value of 10, there's a bunch of just mess on the board. Okay, It's all over the board, and then at the end I say, oh, y is 31. If somebody walks in the room and they see this answer, they have no idea what I plugged in for x. On the other hand, if you use function notation and you plug in 10, so that means I'm inputting, my input is 10, it means wherever I see an x in this equation, I'm going to replace it with the number 10. It's just a fancy way of writing replace x with 10 in the equation. Great. So when you do that math, you get the following. f of 10 is equal to 31. Okay, now there might have been a lot of work on the board that led up to that. But what's important is somebody walks in the room, they see this answer versus this answer. The one on the right tells somebody, oh, I see, your y is 31. What the heck was your input? The one on the left, somebody walks in and says, oh, I see you plugged in 10, you got out 31. It's an extremely strong notation, and it's great for applications. Before I do a ton of applications with this, let me just do a few more examples with this one. If I wanted to know what f of 1 is, I would just go to my original function, f. I'd look for the name here. Oh, that's the f function. Great. And I'd plug in the number 1 for x. And that's 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So f of 1 is equal to 4. In other words, when I plug in 1, I get out 4. Input, output. 
I could do this all day long. F of negative uh, 3. Well, that means I go to my function, and wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 3. 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9, plus 1 is a negative 8. Or in other words, f of negative 3 is equal to a negative 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a real world problem. In this problem, uh, this is actually real data. This is about my car. It cost me about five pennies per mile in fuel to drive my car, plus four pennies per mile in insurance. And that's just averaging out how much it costs per year and how many miles I drive per year. The cost for upkeep is roughly six pennies per mile. Write a linear function that represents how much it costs to drive my car in terms of the number of miles I drive. And then we'll ask some questions based on that. So let's see. Normally, we would write something like C is equal to, so we have the cost is equal to, let's see, 5 cents per mile is 0.05 M plus, let's see, 4 cents per mile for insurance plus 0.04 M plus then we have this uh, cost for upkeep. That's like for tires and uh, oil changes and stuff like that. 0.06 m. Of course I could simplify this, right? We have 6 plus 4 plus 5, that's 15 cents per mile. So that implies the cost is 0.15 m. I own the car outright so I don't have to worry about a finance cost in here. And uh, yeah, there's no other hidden costs behind the scenes. And I don't pretty it up with car washes because that costs money. I sound cheap when I say that, don't I? All right, so let's write this as a function. Now, often I choose the same letter that I would normally choose if I were writing this as an equation. So in other words, I would choose this, C of M is equal to 0 0.15 M. You don't have to do F of X, you could use C of M. You could also, by the way, say cost of M is equal to 0 0.15 m. And anybody who's done anything in computer science as far as programming goes, you know that this is how you usually do label your variables. You use words because, well, if you're going to hand your code to somebody else, they need to know what your variables mean, and words tend to do the job. So here we have a, a linear equation that we just wrote as a linear function. There's really no difference between a linear equation and a linear function as far as writing, I mean very little difference. Now I can ask some really cool questions and base it on this function notation. How much do I spend in a year if I drive 24,000 miles per year? In other words, how much do I spend if I drive 24,000 miles? So I'll evaluate the function at 24,000. This is called evaluating the function at 24,000. So plugging 24,000 in wherever I see an M, because that was the variable that I replaced 24,000 with, I get the following, 0.15 times 24,000. And when I multiply that out, it should be about 3,600. So in other words, C of 24,000 is equal to 3,600. And if anybody walks in, if they know what C stands for, especially if you use the word cost, they say, oh, I see you're talking about a cost of something. You plugged in 24,000. You got out 3,600. 24,000 miles driven leads to a cost of $3,600 per year, or, you know, $3,600. As another application, let's just take a look at this. The market, this is supposed to be the market value of merchandise, not the actual value of merchandise, but the market, what people will actually pay for merchandise in a Halloween store is modeled by the function V of T is equal to 60,000 divided by T, where T is the number of weeks after Halloween. Evaluate and interpret V of 10. So first part is just evaluate V of 10, which means that we take that function here and wherever we see T, which is what we're replacing here, we're going to replace it with 10. We get this, which is 6,000. Now the question is, what does that mean? That V of T is equal, or I'm sorry, V of 10 is equal to 6,000. 
It means that in 10 weeks, because our input variable stands for the number of weeks that have passed. So in 10 weeks, uh, the market value is $6,000. I don't know if that's absolutely realistic, but uh, the fact is that the value of their stock is decreasing as time goes on because, well, who wants to buy Halloween stuff right after Halloween? So, uh, unless you're stocking up for next year. So as time moves on, you get into Christmas, nobody's really buying, uh, you know, Halloween costumes. Now, as a simpler, or much more, <laughs> that's not a word, as, as a simple example, we'll just evaluate capital F of X is equal to 1 minus X divided by 2x minus 3 at 5 halves. Trying to throw at you all the different um, language or different terms that we use for evaluating functions. Sometimes we just say what's f of 5 halves. Sometimes we ask you to evaluate f at 5 halves uh, or interpret the, what f of 5 halves means. Find the value of f of 5 halves. They all mean the same thing. This just basically means replace the input with 5 halves. So you get this, 1 minus 5 halves all over 2 times 5 halves minus 3. Now there's a couple ways you could actually do this. Um, one way I would actually have done, another I think everybody else in the world probably does. For me, when I have a fraction over a fraction, which is exactly what you're looking at, you have a fraction over a fraction, uh, I end up finding the LCD of all the fractions in this. So in other words, I have this numerator has a fraction with a denominator of 2. The denominator has a fraction with a denominator of 2. Eh, technically it doesn't. If you simplify it down even slightly, you get this. This 2 goes in that 2, so you get 5 minus 3. So this actually does simplify down quite a bit before I even have to do any work here. But I get to this point. I still say multiply top and bottom by the LCD. I have a fraction on top. I really don't have a fraction on the bottom. It's just 2 over 1. But the LCD for all the fractions, the numerator and denominator is 2. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 2. 2 over 2, really, I'm just multiplying this fraction by the number 1, right? 2 over 2 is just 1. So I'm not really changing this, the value of this fraction, just the look of it. I'll distribute the 2 to both terms in the numerator. And, of course, in the denominator, I'll just multiply that by 2. So the denominator becomes 4. The numerator becomes 2 minus 5 halves times 2. And those two will cancel. So you get this nice 2 minus 5 all over 4, or in other words, negative 3 fourths. There's a lot of ways to do that style of problem. but uh, that was kind of the uh, secondary stuff, all the arithmetic in the background. What's important is that you could be that you could evaluate this function at a fractional value. Okay. Now, for those who are in other courses or um, who are all around the world, whatever it may be, that you're taking an algebra class right now or maybe reviewing algebra, there are a lot of other things you can do with functions. I'm doing the more advanced evaluations of functions later on. And when I say more advanced stuff, I'm talking stuff like, um, well, let's see if I can write a few things up really quickly. Stuff like if f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, it's very simple to evaluate f at 2. Okay. But what about evaluating f at a or f at x plus 4? or evaluating f of 4 squared, or what's f of 2 minus f of 3? Or, even more advanced, what's f of f of 2? Okay. All of these things we'll talk about in a future lecture. This lecture was meant to essentially cover the basics of evaluating functions, but this is what's coming up next. Well, we've already done that, but everything else is coming up in a future video, probably two or three down the road.